Today's openings begin with Dastardly Villain Brewing's Diabolically Decadent Brown Ale. They have several paragraphs on the back of the can trying to describe it, but uh, earthy hop aromas of pine and stone fruit up front blend well with the flavors of caramel chocolate and espresso malts. I think that's a reasonably apt description. And as you can see, it's a beer with a significant head to it. Right, the actual meal openings. First thing in, it says Hex Nuts. These nuts are M4, 25 pieces, and M5, 25 pieces. Again, no mysteries, just bulking out my stock of metric hardware from the affordable sources, because again, um, local sources in Canada, for whatever reason, charge way more for metric hardware than they do for uh, for American, English, whatever you call uh, the old style hardware. M3, M4, M5, M6, M8. 304 stainless steel uh, hex nuts, etc. etc. Uh, 25 pieces of M4 cost me $2.30 Canadian, and the M5 cost me $3.23. Uh, combined shipping, fortunately. What else do you say? They're just basic nuts, good hardware to have. Off to a good start. Next in, we have something that came from a Canadian supplier. I believe it said Richmond, B.C. in there. don't remember specifically ordering from a Canadian supplier, but this is a USB-C digital AV multi-port adapter with three ports. Let's see what variety or version this is. Okay, so we have USB-C there, USB-C there, USB-3 ostensibly there, if they're following the color code correctly, and an HDMI. I think I remember why I ordered this thing. Um, remember a few months ago, I got a uh, HDMI uh, or USB-C um, monitor to uh, experiment with and to show you. I'll put a link to it up there if I can find it. Um, one thing I tried with it is connecting my phone's USB-C to it, and it actually worked. It uh, it popped up a desktop, a Windows-ish looking desktop off my Android phone. Um, anyway, I didn't have a USB hub or anything that could interface with that, so I couldn't get a mouse and or keyboard working with it, so I just had a display that I couldn't do anything with. So I figured I'd order this so that theoretically I can put a big monitor on my phone and use it uh, just like a computer. That's my plan, anyway. We'll see if it actually works. Type-C USB 3.1 hub, USB-C, USB 3.0 slash HDMI slash Type-C female 3-in-1 MacBook adapter. I'm hoping that this is following uh, USB and HDMI specs and isn't just very specifically for Mac only. I hope it works for, you know, any computer, but... We'll have to see. And I spent ten ninety nine on this thing with free shipping at least. Uh, and it was, of course, the least expensive one of this type that I could find at the time. Yeah, most of the other ones from other sellers, uh, say both MacBook and Samsung uh, for the same thing and LG. So I'm relatively confident that it is, in fact, going to work with my Android phone. But we'll have to find out in a while. So here's what I was talking about. I've got just USB-C coming out of my phone straight into this uh, CrowView monitor, and it's giving me this desktop. But I can't do anything with that desktop. And that isn't even the same page that I'm showing here. So I need to put a mouse and keyboard into here somewhere, which is where I'm hoping that this thing will do the job. Let me just change the cables around here and I'll come right back. All right, here we go. We have the device plugged into the phone. We have an HDMI cable and a USB cable going to a mouse. HDMI is going over here. This is just a power cable coming from a wall wart. And as you can see, we have the desktop up again from the phone and I have a mouse and it actually works quite well. It's just as uh, smooth as if it was coming directly on my phone. And uh, I have volume control on the phone. Um, and so it's still using the phone speaker. That's pretty cool. I like that. 
I can see uh, I can see a few different applications for that. Next thing in is something that came anonymously to my P.O. box. I'm not sure if this is from the same guy that's been sending me stuff or if this is from somebody else. Let's find out. Oh, there's a note. Hang on. I'm guessing that this came again from the same anonymous benefactor. Sent it to my P.O. box, ordered it back on, in December, and paid 12 cents at auction with free shipping. Gotta love it. This says it is a camera lens bag, but uh, if it is in fact that, then I can probably use it for all manner of uh, things, like maybe carrying um, carrying my extra camera around when I'm when I'm traveling. Let's find out if that's really what it is. Yeah, that is what it is. It looks like it is for an extra lens for DSLR. You just cinch it down and keep it clean. Clip it onto your strap or something like that to keep your uh, your spare lens handy. That would be a relatively short lens. So when you've got your telephoto lens on or something like that. Hmm. That's feels kind of like wetsuit material. A cheap wetsuit material on the outside and it's nice and fleecy on the inside. Huh. In case you're interested, I've actually found the seller that he bought it from. And this is the item. When it's not on auction, they seem to go for about $11.69 Canadian with a little bit of shipping. And there seems to be several different sizes of these things available. All right, next thing in says wrench. And it feels kind of heavy, like it might be a tool. Ah, it's another nut driver. Okay, I have been ordering these off and on as it occurs to me different uh, common sizes of metric hardware. What is this one? This one says it is a smudge 0 0.0 millimeter. Ah, 7 millimeter. Okay, cool. And does that fit the hardware that I got today? Oh, look at that. That is, in fact, the one that fits an M4. Okay. I still haven't quite figured this out. I'm sure there's a chart somewhere, but um, just note to self, I guess, that M4 hardware takes a 7mm wrench. And now I've got one. Repair hex nut key hand tool socket driver screwdriver wrench nut driver. Got the 7mm one for $12.23 Canadian with free shipping. I'm pretty sure I've ordered from the, this uh, seller before to get any of the ones that I've got already. And they, for whatever reason, even though they're in China, seem to price in Australian dollars. Whatever. They're reasonable enough wrenches. They're not, you know, super high quality. They're not professional mechanics quality. But they're relatively cheap and uh, they're all I'm ever going to need for hobbyist stuff. So there you go. And now the last and largest thing in my mailbox today. This says controller. Right. What sort of controller are you? It feels fairly rigid. It's got a bit of weight to it. I'm not going to cut into it just in case I damage it. It's a clean brown box, which contains a tiny little screwdriver and this big beastie thing here. What do we have? Ooh, a DMX 512 decoder. Oh, that's nifty. And a small instruction sheet that is in English. Yeah, and Chinese, but English. So it can take between 5 and 24 volts in. It can address ah, pixel LEDs or RGBW 5 channel. Oh, cool. Okay, lots of parameters and stuff. So it's DMX in, DMX out, cascades to the next thing. Uh, we have displays for modes and channels and stuff. Buttons and addressable pixel. Oh, okay. So you can use uh, the clock and data type uh, type pixel strips or just the signal ones. Nice. Uh, VCC ground. Oh, and also just straight up PWM out of it. Okay. Looks like it's intended to be relatively industrial. Let's see now, pluggable screw terminals. That's nice on all the way around. Yep, all the way around. Good. So VCC and ground in. Uh, VCC and channels one through five. So that's PWM. And then there is the clock data and ground for your typical uh, uh, pixel strips. 
Hmm. DMX in and out. Menu up and down. I am going to have to see if I can find a little bit more manual than this and spend some time playing with this. And I suspect you guys are going to see this in the very near future. If I have some time to woodshed with it this week, it might even be in the following week. But we'll find out. And uh, yes, you'll definitely see this thing again very, very soon. SP201E DMX512 Decoder SPI Control for SK6812, WS2801, WS2813, WS2812 LED Strip. I paid $21.20 Canadian with $441 shipping from another Chinese seller that prices their stuff in Australian dollars for reasons. There's not much other information here beyond what it said in the, uh, in the little quick start guide. It's got patterns. That's interesting. So yeah, I'm going to have to play with this and uh, I will definitely get back to you in the near future uh, with a deeper exploration of it. I'm intrigued. Well, that was a fun little assortment of stuff. Uh, where did we start from? Uh, uh, nuts, M4 and M5, adding to my collection. I'll eventually get you know, a reasonable stock of metric hardware, but I'm just slowly accumulating it over time. So that's cool. Gift from my, uh, my random donor. <laughs> um, he paid a whole 10 cents at auction for that. That should, uh, that'd be good for storing. Actually, I could probably get like a small Instamatic camera or actually even my sports camera might, you know, my cheap knockoff of a, of a GoPro that would probably sit in there nicely. Anyway, um, this USB to, uh, to uh, HDMI adapter with USB-C and a little hub and stuff in it, that is exactly what I was hoping it was. I was concerned when they started saying that it was only for laptops and only for Apple stuff, but nope, it works just fine with a Samsung Android as well. And um, yeah, so I can basically use my phone as a laptop if I want to. And wrench, another nut driver i am again growing a collection of these these are the hollow shaft kind more or less hollow anyway so you can run nuts onto uh, onto longer bolts i i do like those as opposed to you know just the normal type of wrench although i don't mind a ratcheting one too but you know open ender box in this is a lot faster if you can get at it and then this guy i am intrigued when i spotted this i was thinking i might end up uh, building something that does that same thing takes dmx in and feeds it to uh ws2012 leds but this box already exists it's in a solid metal case and well obviously i'm going to take it apart to see what's inside it and i am going to play with it and light it up and run it through its paces so yeah stay tuned to that hopefully i can find a little bit more detailed manual for it but if not experimenting will have to happen well thanks again everybody for watching i really do appreciate that every time thanks to my patreon supporters and my youtube channel members for helping me finance these shenanigans and of course keeping my beer fridge full always useful thanks to my anonymous donor he keeps sending me random stuff that he finds on ebay for cheap that's always fun and if anybody else wants to uh has anything that they think i really should have uh, my po box is in the channel description uh Feel free, no obligation, of course, but the option's there. And I always find this entertaining to see what kind of randomness I get in the mail. Uh, once again, thanks for watching, everybody. Questions and comments down below as usual. I'll talk to you later.